In this lesson, I'd like to go over how to draw mechanisms and common errors I see my students make in mechanisms and tips to help you avoid them. First of all, let's get some basics down for mechanism writing. I'm going to abbreviate nucleophile with this N in a circle and electrophile with this E in a circle for this video. Our first rule is that the arrow points from the nucleophile to the electrophile. The new bond forms at the tip of the arrow, so where the arrow points, you're going to be drawing your new bond. And where you start your arrow, at the origin of your arrow, that bond is going to break. Now it's important that our nucleophile has extra electrons. The arrow is going to show where these electrons are moving. That's why it comes from the nucleophile and points to the electrophile. So what are some things that can have extra electrons? So lone pairs on something like oxygen or nitrogen can make new bonds and act as nucleophiles. Double bonds and triple bonds can act as nucleophiles. And sometimes our extra electrons are represented with a negative charge, and you could show that negative charge actually attacking, and your arrow will point from that. Now in this lesson, we're going to be looking at polar mechanisms. We'll start with a polar acidic mechanism. When we treat this alkene with sulfuric acid and water, we're going to end up forming an alcohol. Okay, let's write our mechanism keeping these rules in mind. In water, sulfuric acid is going to lose a proton and form the hydronium ion. So we'll draw that out and show our alkene reacting with it. Okay, now our arrow needs to point from the nucleophile to the electrophile. And the nucleophile has to have extra electrons. We can see this has a positive charge here. So this is the thing that has extra electrons to give this double bond. This is already positive, so it's not going to be a very good nucleophile, but it'll be a great electrophile. Our first arrow is going to show the alkene attacking one of the protons on the hydronium ion. Now, it might be tempting to just show this one arrow, but in mechanism writing, we show a second arrow for a bond breaking and becoming a lone pair. So when we put this lone pair on oxygen, we need a second arrow. Now we want to show our new bond at the tip of the arrow, so we're going to have to put a new bond from this double bond to the hydrogen atom. Now we showed the bond coming out this way, and so we're attaching the hydrogen on this end. Well, that means this end of the alkene lost its electrons, so we're going to end up with a positive charge there. Now if we follow our arrows, we see our new bond was formed here, this bond broke and became a lone pair on oxygen, so we also get a molecule of water. It's a good time for me to make another point about mechanisms. In any step of a mechanism, charge is conserved. So here we have a neutral alkene reacting with the positive hydronium ion, and so this is neutral, this is positive, we need to get a plus one out of the reaction. Now, if you don't have this charge balance, then you've either drawn something wrong or you've not shown all of the products of the step. So here, we have this positive carbocation and this neutral water. So we have an overall plus one on this side and an overall plus one on this side. So we know we've done this correctly. We need to end up with an OH group here. So water can now attack at this carbocation via the oxygen atom, which has extra electrons on it. So we have our nucleophile pointing to the electrophile, which is that positive charge, the carbocation. And now we can just draw a bond connecting this lone pair to this carbon atom. And now when we check our work, we'll see I started with a positive, reacting with a neutral, and oh no, I drew a neutral. That means I've missed a positive charge somewhere. The oxygen has shared its electrons in this bond, and therefore it now has a positive charge. So we can add on our positive charge and a pair of electrons. Now we're getting really close to our product. We just have an extra hydrogen and a positive charge. What can happen next is water can come in and deprotonate one of the hydrogen atoms, reforming a hydronium ion and giving us our alcohol. So our nucleophile is going to be electrons. Here it's the lone pair on oxygen. And we're going to point to this extra hydrogen atom and put this lone pair back on oxygen. This arrow pushing gives us our alcohol and also a molecule of the hydronium ion. Now before we dive into the common errors, I want to go over a basic mechanism. So this is a polar basic mechanism. 
this molecule is going to cyclize. It's going to form a ring. And this is going to do this by a reaction called the intramolecular aldol. I want to show you a basic mechanism because they're different from acidic mechanisms, though the rules remain the same. Now, what's going on here is we're going to have this spot of the molecule connect to this spot on the molecule, and that'll make this ring. We should notice we have lost one of our oxygen atoms, but we've gained a double bond. So let's try to tackle this mechanism and see how it goes. We can think about sodium as a spectator ion in our reaction, so we'll just draw Na plus up here. It's the OH minus counter ion that's going to do the work. Now we can see we have a negative charge. We have extra lone pairs on this oxygen atom, and that's going to be our nucleophile. The first step is going to be deprotonation of the hydrogen atoms that are next to the carbonyl, or alpha to it. So hydroxide, with its extra electrons represented here by a negative charge, is going to point to one of these hydrogen atoms and make a negative charge next to the carbonyl. Our product is called an enolate. Now this carbon atom is a nucleophile, and we can point to this carbonyl carbon and form a bond there. Because of the dipole in a carbonyl group, this is delta negative and this is delta positive. Let's add our arrows. Now here we're going to connect where this arrow points, and then we have another arrow coming from a double bond, and we'll show that breaking at the origin of this arrow and becoming a lone pair on oxygen. Now we're getting really close. We've made our ring, but we still have our oxygen and we don't have a double bond. So we want this oxygen to leave the molecule, but it'll never leave with a pair of electrons right now because it would have to leave as a two minus and that's just way too high in energy. So we're gonna put a proton on here from water first. We have this negative charge that'll be our nucleophile and it's going to deprotonate a proton on water. Be sure not to forget that second arrow putting the lone pair back on oxygen. In the next step, we're going to enolize this molecule again, like we did up here. We'll add on the hydrogen next to the carbonyl and use the molecule of hydroxide that we generated from deprotonation of this water molecule to deprotonate that hydrogen atom. Now, hydroxide isn't the best leaving group, but in special situations, it can leave. And where we have this negative charge that's stabilized by the carbonyl, and it's going to form a double bond that's in conjugation with the carbonyl, conjugation is alternating double and single bonds here, it's going to be actually quite favorable for the hydroxide to leave. So in this case, we can show hydroxide being pushed out as the double bond forms. So this negative charge is at the origin, so it's not going to be here anymore. It's going to move to where we've pointed, giving us our double bond, and the hydroxide has been eliminated. All right, let's return to our acid-catalyzed hydration mechanism to go into our common errors. And I wanna just sort of correct one thing here. I said the bond breaks at the origin of the arrow, and that's sometimes true, like in this case where we're showing this bond opening up a double bond, but really it might be a little bit more correct to say that the electrons move away from the origin. So let's update our rule to say that, and it'll be a little bit more correct here. Okay, this first one is pretty bad, not attacking with the nucleophile. Let me show you how you might do this in this example. Say we have our alkene, and we're abbreviating the hydronium ion as just simple H+. The way you'd make this error is by showing H+, attacking the alkene, instead of the other way around. I see this type of error a lot, unfortunately. I most often see this in carbonyl chemistry. Now the H plus can't possibly do the attacking. It doesn't have any electrons whatsoever. It's positively charged. So how do we avoid this error? Drawing out all your lone pairs on your molecule is gonna help a lot. Also remembering that for the most part, a neutral or negative atom is going to do the attacking. That'll help you also. Another common error I see is where the arrows don't flow, they kind of point at each other or away from each other. Let me show you an example of how I would see this drawn using this mechanism. So we've got a couple problems here. First of all, the hydrogen is again attacking the alkene, and then this arrow is going in this way, so they're kind of going away from each other. And sometimes they'll be going towards each other when you make this error. 
So your arrows should kind of flow in the same direction. Now, there is one case, we're looking at polar mechanisms here, and in radical mechanisms, you may see arrows. There's a way to draw that where arrows are coming at each other. So this doesn't apply to radical reactions, but in a polar mechanism, if you have arrows pointing away or toward each other, something is probably wrong and you should revisit it. Losing your charges throughout the course of a mechanism is a big one that I see all the time. Let's show an example. So here we showed our alkene attacking H+, and we showed this product, but we're missing the charge on this carbon atom that we had up here. An easy way to avoid this is checking the charge balance in every step. The reactants that you show coming together, whatever product you make, it should have the same overall charge. So here, neutral and a plus, oh no, gave us a neutral. We're missing a positive charge somewhere in this molecule. Now this next error comes from the fact that in a solution, in a reaction flask where these reactions are occurring, it is only likely that two molecules are going to collide perfectly at once in the right orientation to make a new bond. So showing more than two things coming together is just really unlikely. And so you have to decide which step comes first. Let me show you an example. So if we try to show this carbocation reacting at once with two molecules of water, we might think that we're saving a step. Let me show you how the arrow pushing might look in this error. So here it looks like the lone pair is deprotonating this and then the, these electrons are coming in here. But we have to decide what happens first because it's not likely that these th three things will come together in the correct geometry to make this all in one step. And since this mechanism is under acidic conditions, we need to choose our steps so that we form only positive charges. I'll get to this common error in just a second. Let's jump back to our anionic, negatively charged mechanism, this intramolecular aldol, to go through the last four common errors I have for you. So often with long chains like this, my students lose points for misdrawing their structure. Here's an example. Instead of making the six-membered ring, they've miscounted and done a five-membered ring here. An easy way to avoid this is to number your carbons. If we number our chain, then number our ring, we can easily see that we don't have the same number of carbon atoms. And we can see that carbon three should have formed a bond with carbon eight, and here we have three forming a bond with carbon seven. An easy error to avoid, and I number my carbons all the time. Now, every time you make a new bond, you just wanna have one arrow to show that new bond forming. You don't need more than one. Now, I can't actually show this one with this mechanism. I wanna show you the most common way I see my students make this mistake. And it's when they try to protonate a carbonyl with acid. So when showing these two things react, they'd show the arrow pushing like this. Now there's actually two ways to show this correctly. The first one is just by taking out this arrow and showing the carbonyl get protonated at oxygen. So here's one way to show this correctly. And then we also can use an arrow that originates from this double bond and show it breaking upon protonation. So here we're showing the arrow coming from the double bond, coming away from this carbon, which leaves it positive. And then we just have two bonds to oxygen in each case and oxygen stays neutral. But when you have extra arrows to form one new bond, I think it gets a little confusing. So it's best to pick one of these styles for your arrow pushing. Exceeding valence can be a big problem in mechanism writing. And if you exceed valence, your mechanism will always be wrong. We want to follow the octet rule. So we want, for the most part, eight electrons around the common atoms in organic mechanisms. Let me show you how you might make this error. So if we look at this step here, and we forget to draw our second arrow, we end up with this. Here we now have five bonds to carbon. This puts 10 electrons around it, exceeding the octet rule and exceeding the valence that carbon can have. So it's really important to check your structures for the proper valence. I have a little trick to help you do this. To avoid this, we'll think about going across the periodic table, starting with carbon. So here's this part of the periodic table, really good to memorize. Now just count down, four, three, two, one. This number is the number of bonds that each of these atoms will form when it is neutral. So if you have a neutral carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, you should look for these number of bonds. And of course, this is going to 
go right down the periodic table so we could add in chlorine, bromine, iodine here. These are all going to make one bond when they're neutral. So if you have more or less than this number of bonds to these atoms and they're neutral, you've done something wrong. Either you're missing a charge or you've exceeded the valence. Another great way to avoid this is by adding in your lone pairs, especially on heteroatoms. The last common error I'm going to go over is mixed media. Let's look at both of our mechanisms to think about this last point here. So we had an acidic mechanism first, and you'll notice everything along the way was either positively charged or neutral. And then in our basic mechanism here, everything is negatively charged or neutral along the way. Mixed media is essentially when you start making positive charges in base and they can't exist, or you're making negative charges in acid that can't possibly exist. Let me show you an example using this mechanism. Say we didn't know the first step of this mechanism, and we thought that maybe this oxygen gets protonated. We might draw arrows that look like this, showing the carbonyl becoming protonated by a molecule of water in base. That'll give us this product but we've just formed a positive charge in sodium hydroxide. If this could even form, immediately hydroxide would deprotonate it because this is so acidic with a negative pKa, but it really can't even form in the first place. What we can do is we can check pKa's. We can set up an equilibrium to see what will actually happen in this case and look it up on a pKa table. So we'll draw a carbonyl, and then we want to think about it reacting with water. And then we'll look at the equilibrium and consider this acting as an acid and protonating this. Now let's add in the pKa's of the, these conjugate acids. Water is 15.7 and a protonated carbonyl is something like minus 5. So this is a really, really low pKa. This is the most acidic thing we have in solution. Essentially, the equilibrium lies so far this way that these species will never exist. So if we're wondering about a step, we can use the pKa table to set up an equilibrium and see if the protonation that we're suggesting is actually plausible. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.